So if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering if Transformers 1 is going to get a sequel despite its poor performance in the box office. I mean, it got beat out by The Wild Robot and Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, which is absolutely crazy to me because I saw Beetlejuice and I thought it was a terrible movie, very similar to how I felt about uh, its version of the Fanta drink that Haunted Apple was just uh, it was disgusting. But I felt like that movie specifically lacked any kind of depth and relied way too heavily on nostalgia to, to drive people to want to go and see the movie. It didn't really progress the story whatsoever, especially when you consider just how great the, the original movie actually is. But this isn't, this isn't a review of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I really want to qualify whether or not Transformers 1 really does deserve a sequel, or at least an opportunity to give us another movie even if they don't make enough money to cover their budget or their marketing costs. Now, I know that Paramount is in the business of making money just like any other movie studio. Obviously, they want to see a return on their investment for anything that they spent on the budget, additional marketing, etc. But I think one of my biggest concerns is that even if Transformers 1 breaks even with their budget through the box office numbers, maybe Paramount decides that because it was so close that they didn't see a huge return, maybe they decide that they're not going to give us a sequel because they don't see it as a worthy investment for the future. And that's a big concern for me, especially as somebody who really loved Transformers 1. I mean, we got a lot of unresolved storylines that we need to see how they play out. I mean, it's great that they gave us the origin story or a reimagining of such for D16 and Orion Pax and their transformation into Megatron and Optimus Prime. But we got a lot of unresolved stuff that's taken place in Transformers 1 that we need to see it through in another movie. I mean, the Quintessons are still a looming threat on Cybertron, and I kind of want to see how that plays out. Transformers 1 does a great job really setting up that storyline alongside the origin story that we get to witness. But I want to know what happens next. Now that Sentinel Prime is completely out of the equation, the Quintessons don't have to abide by any agreement that they previously had. I mean, obviously the Cybertronians are no longer providing them Energon, but you gotta wonder with the free flow of Energon now back on Cybertron, the Quintessons are really in a position that they could take it by force if they really wanted to. And then you've got the end credit scene that sets up the rise of the Decepticons perfectly, which one can only hope that that means we're eventually going to finally get to see the Autobots, the Decepticons, the war for Cybertron on the big screen. And I've been waiting for that for years. And so to finally get a little glimmer of hope that this is the direction that they want to take the franchise just to rip it back and decide not to make a sequel would be absolutely crushing as a Transformers fan. And I think one of the things that worries me the most is that this wouldn't be the first time a movie studio decides to pull the rug out from underneath its fan base even though the movie that they made was widely accepted and maybe only made a little bit more money in the box office. You just have to look back to 2017 when Lionsgate came out with Power Rangers. Whether you loved or hated that movie, I, I don't know. I, I personally thought it was fantastic. Yeah, it was a different version, different iteration of Power Rangers, and I had some some problems with the Zords or at least the way Goldar was portrayed. But overall, the story was incredible and I enjoyed the acting. I, I was mesmerized in theaters when I saw that movie. And they decided, you know what? Yeah, we hit our budget. We did everything that we needed to do as far as making money in the box office. But we're not going to make any more of this movie. We're not going to continue the story. And they teased the Green Ranger. So it was a huge disappointment for me to find out later that, you know what? They're just going to cancel all plans around it. And that's what I'm worried about when it comes to Transformers 1. That everybody could be very excited about this film. Everybody could be very accepting of this film. And everybody just wants more of it. And Paramount decides, you know what? It's just not worth our time. It's not worth our money. So we're just going to cancel all of our plans around it, which would be incredibly frustrating for Transformers fans, because let's be honest, I think the last time that we all agreed that a Transformers movie was good or relatively good was when Bumblebee came out. And even that movie you could probably pick apart. Uh, Rise of the Beast was, you know, okay. One of the issues I had with it, though, was the, the Beast Wars characters weren't really that prominent in the movie. Half of them didn't even have lines. Air Razor never transformed, and honestly, I, I just remember being really disappointed when I saw that movie. Overall, the flow was good, but I was frustrated because I'm a huge Beast Wars fan, 
and I don't feel like they really did those characters justice. I think Cheetor had like two lines, just pissed me off. But when you think about what Transformers 1 has done here as a whole, they've really given us exactly what we were asking for for all these years. Stories that were really rich in lore, and they delivered. They really did. We got the 13 Primes on the big screen. Yeah, we only got them for a little period of time. We don't really know a whole lot about their backstories yet, but it leaves a lot of potential for them to do offshoots. If it's not a sequel, give us Transformers Zero or Transformers 13. I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. And, and it could be a whole movie that's just based around the 13 Primes. And if they don't want to do that, they could always look at some of the stuff they've already set up. I mean, we've already got a little bit of the history of Primus. We don't know if Unicron plays a role at all in this particular universe. I imagine that he does, but I, I've been trying, I've been racking my brain trying to figure out how they could include Unicron into a future installment of Transformers 1. And right now, I feel like if they did decide to add him into the sequel outside of like an end credit scene, I just don't think it would make sense since the primary focus, I truly believe, should 100% be the unresolved conflict with the Quintessons. But maybe Unicron plays a role into that somehow. Maybe. I don't know. Let me know you guys' thoughts on that and where you're sitting with Unicron in Transformers 1's uh, universe as a whole. Because right now I'm kind of at a loss. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to see Unicron play a role in the story at some point. I just don't want them to shoehorn him in where it doesn't make sense or just to sell tickets. Because let's be real, if we all saw a commercial for a sequel, and they just showed a little glimmer of Unicron, we would all buy tickets and we'd be lining up to watch that movie. And I don't, I don't want that to be the case. I think the sequel should be entirely focused on the Quintessons, the rise of the Decepticons, and the future war between them and the Autobots, and maybe, maybe a couple moments where Megatron and Optimus Prime are alone or about to engage in some kind of battle or conversation where there are little glimmers of their previous friendship. Really just like, you know, tug on the heartstrings. I honestly think that's the most realistic approach that they could take to making a Transformers 1 sequel. Mix that in with the appearances of characters like Ironhide, Wheeljack, Cliffjumper, Prowl, or some Decepticons like Skywarp or Thundercracker, or even some of the Cassetticons like Rumble or Ravage. And then also really flesh out characters like Soundwave and Shockwave, who were kind of used as comedic relief in Transformers 1 and only appeared for a really short period of time. I think it would be interesting to see how those characters particularly evolve now that they are full-fledged Decepticons. And let's be honest, I don't think Megatron plans on joking around anytime soon. But let me know where you're at on a Transformers 1 sequel. Do you think that Paramount should greenlight it? regardless of the box office results and base it purely off of fan reception? Or do you think the box office speaks for itself? This movie is a flop and we shouldn't get any more and they should decide to take a different direction. Or maybe we just, uh, you know, go back to the Bayverse films. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys' thoughts are. Like this video. Don't forget to sub to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time.